Hello and welcome. You're watching the Tov Jewish News Channel. My name is Michael Vilensky and my guest today is Yoni Ben Menahem, an expert on the Middle East and on everything that is going in Israel with our neighbors. Yoni, hello. Hello, nice to have you. Yoni, so we witnessed three dramatic developments that can influence our relations with Lebanon and then can actually cause a war with Lebanon. The, the first one is being a, a Hamas leader, al aruri uh, eliminated in Beirut, in the capital of Lebanon, apparently by Israel's forces, the second person in command in, in Hamas. The other thing, the second thing being uh, the barrage of rockets that were fired over Israel uh, during this weekend, uh, the day before yesterday, 62 rockets were fired at different localities and cities in northern Israel from Lebanon, apparently by Hezbollah, as a response to Israel eliminating a Hamas official in Beirut. And the third thing being the terrorist attacks that happened in the city of Kerman in Iran. And Iran already started saying that he, they think that Israel is responsible for it, uh, despite the fact that the Islamic State has taken responsibility for this terrorist attack. Do you think that a war with Lebanon is coming? And is that something that will happen in the nearest time? In my uh, estimation, uh, apparently uh, a military conflict, a wider military conflict between uh, Israel and Hezbollah is inevitable. And uh, it will happen, in my estimation, based on uh, what I talk with the senior IDF commanders, uh, it will happen probably in, in a few weeks after the IDF uh, will uh, finish uh, taking control on the Hanunis uh, area in Gaza Strip, where the uh, uh, military uh, commanders of uh, Hamas are hiding in the tunnels. Once this uh, issue will be settled, I think that uh, Israel will have no choice but to uh, go uh, to a ground attack in South uh, Lebanon to push the Hezbollah forces, the uh, Radwan forces, uh, behind the uh, or over the uh, uh, Litani River, so that there will be no, no threat uh, to the Jewish uh, Jewish uh, settlement on the border with Lebanon, and so that uh, uh, about uh, seventy thousand Israelis can go back home and live uh, peacefully on the on the uh, border without the danger of the uh, uh, anti-tech missiles of Hezbollah attacking uh, the Jewish houses. So you're saying that there is no choice but a war with Lebanon. This is something that we cannot be avoided. It's not, it's not, it's not a war with Lebanon. It's a war against Hezbollah. Uh, and uh, of course, the, the Lebanese government is the one who is responsible for the sovereignty of, uh, uh, of Lebanon and keeping away Hezbollah from the border and implementing the UN resolution 1701 that they uh, Hezbollah is violating, but of course the Lebanese army is very weak and they cannot uh, uh, face uh, militarily uh, Hezbollah. So uh, actually Hezbollah is the strongest uh, force in Lebanon and they do what they want. And they are uh, only implicating Le Lebanon in another dangerous adventure because uh, this time, if there will be a complete war or a full war between Israel and Hezbollah, uh, Lebanon will uh, suffer a lot uh, from this war. And the uh, Israeli uh, officials already warned uh, Lebanon a few months ago that uh, if there will be a war by, caused by because of Hezbollah, then Lebanon will go back to the Stone Age. Uh, that means that uh, Israel uh, will not only destroy a Dahia neighborhood, the stronghold of Hezbollah in Beirut, like it did in uh, 2006, but will destroy all the civilian infrastructure in the state of Lebanon. And this is something that might cause the collapse of the state of Lebanon. Uh, I want you to touch on something that we mentioned previously in our interview, on the elimination of El Aruri, the second person in command in Hamas by Israeli forces in Beirut. What were the reactions to that in the Arab world? How did the Arab world see this? And did they see it as a great victory of Israel? Are, are they becoming afraid of Israel? 
Look, the assassination of one uh, Hamas leader uh, is not called, considered a big victory. It's, it's an achievement, uh, no doubt. Uh, it, uh, it is a, a big achievement of the Israeli intelligence and the operational uh, forces and the Israeli Air Force who uh, committed or uh, assassinated uh, Saleh al with a, a very accurate missiles. Uh, but it also indicates the failure uh, of uh, Hezbollah. And, uh, this is no doubt a big failure of Hezbollah from the intelligence point of view and from the operational point of view because uh, uh, Dahia neighborhood is the biggest stronghold of Hezbollah in Lebanon. And in the heart of uh, Dahia, uh, Israel succeeded in uh, assassinating a senior Hamas military leader, uh, this is very shameful. And actually, the Arab world uh, is laughing at Hassan Nasrallah uh, because he, he warned uh, uh, last, last August that if Israel will commit any assassination on the uh, Lebanese soil, uh, whoever it will be, Iranian, Palestinian, or Hezbollah activists, uh, then there will be a strong reaction. And uh, Israel uh, ignored this uh, red line of Hassan Nasrallah and showed him that uh, Israel is setting the rules of the game. So uh, this is a big humiliation for Hezbollah. The, the Arabs, the Arab countries are not uh, sorry and are not uh, crying over uh, Saleh al who was one of the biggest terrorists of Hamas. And uh, uh, Hamas is considered a very dangerous movement, a terror movement that not only endangers the Israeli security, but also uh, endangers the, uh, uh, the Arab regimes in the area because it is part of the uh, Muslim Brotherhood uh, movement, which is a danger to the Arab regime. So uh, the Arab world is not crying for Saleh al -Aruri. Yoni. As we all know, uh, Lebanon is not a homogenous country. They have many groups, they have the Christians, for example, they have Sunni Arabs, they have Shia Arabs, they have Druze. And so my question to you is the following. If there is a war now with Lebanon, with Hezbollah, as you said, uh, will there be groups inside Lebanon that will support Israel, that will be with Israel against uh, Hezbollah? Of course not. They, they will not. Uh, what, what do you mean? They go out with weapons and help Israel? This will never happen. Hezbollah is very strong and uh, they are afraid of Hezbollah. But of course, they already make it clear. Even be, before the October 7th, be, before the uh, war started, they are uh, calling uh, different factions uh, in uh, Lebanon, the Christians, the Muslims, and the Druze are calling Hezbollah to refrain from going to war with Israel, but Hezbollah uh, sees only the interest of, uh, of uh, Iran and the interest of Hassan Nasrallah. So they uh, uh, ignored these uh, uh, requests of the uh, uh, Lebanese faction, political factions. And also you have to remember that uh, as a result of what is happening in the south of Lebanon, about uh, uh, 1, 100,000 uh, residents in the Lebanese residents in south of Lebanon had to leave the villages because of the fighting in south of Lebanon and they uh, went up north uh, to Beirut area in order not to be uh, hurt by the fighting in south Lebanon and they are also uh, putting pressure on Hezbollah not to go to a, a, a whole out war in, with Israel uh, and, and stop the, the war which is now, spot, stop the, the fighting now in South Lebanon, but Hezbollah ignores them even though that most of them are Shiite. Uh, uh, and, and they say, the Hezbollah said, look, uh, Hassan Nasrallah gave his speech, two speeches in the end of, uh, of last week, and he said, we are doing this for you. He's trying now to, justify what he's doing, he's lying to them, saying, I'm doing it for you because I want uh, Israel to give back the lands. Uh, <coughs> sorry. I want Israel to give back the lands that he took from Lebanon 
Uh, in the past, there, are, uh, there is a dispute between Israel and Lebanon about the, the border uh, in uh, what is called Mazar Shaba and the Rajar village. And he says, look, I'm, all, I'm doing it not only to uh, help Hamas in Gaza, but also for Lebanon, so we will get our land back. Uh, so, of course, this is the lie. Uh, uh, what he's doing, actually, is a, an attrition war uh, against Israel in trying to weak Israel and, uh, and help Hamas in Gaza, and also uh, to serve the Iranian uh, purpose. But we have to remember, uh, in my estimation, Hassan Asala doesn't want a full war with Israel. He doesn't want that. He wants to blackmail Israel uh, for a full ceasefire, uh, something in Gaza, something that will never happen because Israel is determined to finish the war in Gaza and uh, topple the Hamas regime. So the war will take a few more months and uh, also to uh, uh, blackmail Israel for a withdrawal from these disputed points on the border with Lebanon. So uh, uh, we have to wait and see, but as I told you, uh, from the Israeli point of view, it is not possible to continue with uh, this situation when 70,000 uh, Israelis uh, had to leave their houses on the border with Lebanon, so Israel will have to do something about it and make them uh, go back to their houses, uh, and this will happen, in my estimation, in a few weeks. Yoni Ben Menachem, thank you very much for your insight on the situation with Lebanon. Very interesting interview with you, like every time. Thank you. Thank, thank you also to all of our viewers that saw this interview. Don't forget to subscribe to us on WhatsApp, that the link you see in the description under the video, and to the rest of our social media platforms. Thank you again, and have a nice day.